in Troit him 519. This evening's choral evensong, the last of this academic year, features the first rendition of the Magnificat and Nunc Dimittis, the St. Lawrence service, specially composed, commissioned by the choir here um, from composer David McGregor. Come to me, saith the Lord, all ye that labour and are overburdened, and I will refresh you. And St. John saith, If our heart condemn us, God is greater than our heart, and knoweth all things. 
Dearly beloved brethren, the scripture move with us in sundry places to acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness and that we should not dissemble nor cloak them before the face of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, but confess them with an humble, lowly, penitent and obedient heart to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy. And although we ought at all times humbly to acknowledge our sins before God, Yet ought we most chiefly so to do when we assemble and meet together to render thanks for the great benefits that we've received at his hands, to set forth his most worthy praise, to hear his most holy word, and to ask those things which are requisite and necessary as well for the body as the soul. Wherefore, I pray and beseech you as many as are here present to accompany me with a pure heart and humble voice unto the throne of the heavenly grace, as we say together. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus you are Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for thy sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, and hath given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people being penitent the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all them that truly repent and unfeignedly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore, let us beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy through Jesus Christ our Lord. sit for the singing of the psalm, Psalm 150.
taken from the book of Genesis, chapter 27, beginning at verse 1. And it came to pass that when Isaac was old and his eyes were dim, so that he could not see, he called Esau, his eldest son, and said unto him, My son, and he said unto him, Behold, here I am. And he said, Behold, I am old, I know not the day of my death. Now therefore take, I pray thee, thy weapons, thy quiver, and thy bow, and go out to the field, and take me some venison, and make me savoury meat, such as I love, and bring it to me, that I may eat, that my soul may bless thee before I die. And Rebekah heard when Isaac spake to Esau his son, and Esau went to the field to hunt for venison, and, bring to, and to bring it. And Rebekah spake unto Jacob her son, saying, Behold, I heard thy father speak unto Esau thy brother, saying, Bring me venison, and make me savoury meat, that I may eat, and bless thee before the Lord before my death. Now therefore, my son, obey my voice according to that which I command thee. Go now to the flock, and fetch me from thence two good kids of the goats, and I will make them savoury meat for thy father, such as he loveth. And thou shalt bring it to thy father, that he may eat, and that he may bless thee before his death. Jacob said to Rebekah, his mother, Behold, Esau my brother is a hairy man, and I am a smooth man. My father, peradventure, will feel me, and I shall seem to him as a deceiver, and I shall bring a curse upon me, and not a blessing. And his mother said unto him, Upon me be thy curse, my son. Only obey my voice, and go fetch me them. And he went and fetched, and brought them to his mother. And his mother made savoury meat, such as his father loved. And Rebekah took goodly raiment of her eldest son Esau, which were with her in the house, and put them upon Jacob, her younger son. And she put the skins of the kids of the goats upon his hands and upon the smooth of his neck. And she gave the savoury meat and the bread which she had prepared into the hand of her son Jacob. And he came unto his father and said, My father, and he said, Here am I. Who art thou, my son? And Jacob said unto his father, I am Esau, thy firstborn. I have done according as thou badest me. Arise, I pray thee, sit and eat of my venison, that thy soul may bless me. And Isaac said unto his son, How is it that thou hast found it so quickly, my son? And he said, Because the Lord thy God brought it to me. And Isaac said unto Jacob, Come near, I pray thee, that I may feel thee, my son, whether thou be my very son Esau or not. And Jacob went near unto Isaac his father, and he felt him, and said, The voice is Jacob's voice, but the hands are the hands of Esau. And he discerned him not, because his hands were hairy, and his brother Esau's hands, so he blessed him. And he said, Art thou my very son Esau? And he said, I am. And he said, Bring it near to me, and I will eat of my son's venison, that my soul may bless thee. And he brought it near to him, and he did eat. And he brought him wine, and he drank. And his father Isaac said unto him, Come near now, and kiss me, my son. 
and he came near and kissed him. And he smelled the smell of his raiment and blessed him and said, See, the smell of my son is as the smell of a field which the Lord hath blessed. Therefore God give thee of the dew of heaven and the fatness of the earth and plenty of corn and wine. Let people serve thee and nations bow down to thee. Be Lord over thy brethren and let thy mother's son bow down to thee. Cursed be every one that curseth thee and blessed be he that blesseth thee. And it came to pass as soon as Isaac had made an end of blessing Jacob and Jacob was yet scarce gone out from the presence of Isaac, his father, that Esau, his brother, came in from his hunting. And he also had made savoury meat and brought it unto his father and said unto his father, let my father arise and eat of his son's venison that thy soul may bless me. And Isaac, his father, said unto him, Who art thou? And he said, I am thy son, thy firstborn, Esau. And Isaac trembled very exceedingly and said, Who? Where is he that hath taken venison and brought it to me? And I have eaten of all before thou camest and have blessed him. Yea, and he shall be blessed. And when Esau heard the words of his father, he cried with a great and exceeding bitter cry, and said unto his father, Bless me, even me also, O my father. And he said, Thy brother came with subtlety, and hath taken away thy blessing. And he said, is not he rightly named Jacob? For he hath supplanted me these two times. He took away my birthright, and behold, now he hath taken away my blessing. And he said, Hast thou not reserved a blessing for me? And Isaac answered and said unto Esau, Behold, I have made him thy lord, and all his brethren have I given to him for servants. And with corn and wine have I sustained him, and what shall I do now unto thee, my son? And Esau said unto his father, Hast thou but one blessing, my father? Bless me, even me also, O my father. And Esau lifted up his voice and wept. And Isaac his father answered and said unto him, Behold, thy dwelling shall be the darkness of the earth and of the dew of heaven from above. And by thy sword shalt thou live and shalt serve thy brother. And it shall come to pass when thou shalt have the dominion that thou shalt break his yoke from off thy neck. Here endeth the first lesson.
The second lesson is taken from Mark chapter 6, verses 1 to 6. And he went out from thence and came into his own country, and his disciples follow him. And when the Sabbath was come, he began to teach in the synagogue. And many hearing him were astonished, saying, From whence has this man these things? And what wisdom is this which is given unto him, that even such mighty works are wrought by his hands? Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James and Joseph, and of Judah and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they were offended at him. But Jesus said unto them, A prophet is not without honour, but in his own country, and among his own kin, and in his own house. And he could there do no mighty work, save that he laid his hands upon a few sick folk, and healed them. Here ends the second lesson.
our Savior, Jesus Christ. anthem with music by Edward C. Bairstow. The words are from the hymn which you can find at number 169, the 7th century hymn, Herbs Beata Jerusalem, Blessed City, Heavenly Salem.
I publish the bans of marriage between Elliot James Connoran and Lauren Madison, both single and residing in the parish of St. Thomas Lowther Street, York, and having a qualifying connection entitling them to marry in this parish. If any of you know cause or just impediment why these two persons should not be joined together in holy matrimony, ye are to declare it. This is the second time of asking. This is our last um, choral even song of the university term, so obviously an occasion to express our appreciation to the choir uh, for your labours throughout the year and looking forward to the delights of next year. Prayer book even song will of course continue throughout the summer at half past six, alas, without the full choir, but uh, we will have we will have proper even song. This evening there are uh, refreshments suitable to the occasion um, at the back of church after the service, and I hope everybody can stay for um, a, a glass of wine. And on a personal note, um, can I just uh, thank everybody who sent cards uh, and, 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 and thank you for the prayers uh, for the soul of my late father. We'll stand and sing 562. Strains of that hymn continue to echo around. Let us make it our prayer for the people of Ukraine, for the people of Afghanistan, for in, in public life in this country, 
in the United States and all the nations of the world and in our city particularly let us pray for all who work in the rail industry all who use the railways Lord hear us Reflecting on the readings that we have heard tonight, the deception of Jacob, and yet Jacob the son favoured by the Lord. We give thanks to the Lord who works with us in spite of our sins and failings. O God, in whose holy kingdom there is nothing that worketh evil or maketh a lie, help us, we pray thee, to guard our words, to keep our promises, and to speak the truth in love, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And thinking of the gospel reading, let us give thanks for the families, the communities from which we come, all to which we belong. We pray for those who encourage and help us. We pray for those who we think of as holding us back. We think of the effect we have on others by our words and deeds, so often unthinkingly. Visit, we beseech thee, O Lord, our homes, and drive from them all the snares of the evil one. Let thy holy angels dwell to preserve all who live there in peace. And may thy blessing evermore through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And at this time of year we pray for those being ordained. We pray for James, newly ordained priest, for the deacons ordained at the minster yesterday, We pray for Stephen to be ordained in London next weekend. And at the end of the university year, we pray particularly for those moving on, especially members of our choir, giving thanks for their contribution here. We pray that each and every one of us may have a lively sense of God's call, God's gifts at work in us, are following that call. Eternal God and Father, thou hast created thy power and redeem us by thy love. Guide and strengthen us by thy spirit that we may give ourselves in love and service to one another and to thee, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And in a moment of quiet, let us each bring to the Lord the things we carry as burdens on our minds, in our hearts tonight. So let's join in saying the prayer of St. Chrysostom. Almighty God, who hast given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and as promise that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, 
thou wilt grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come, life everlasting. Amen. The final hymn, number 656A. 656A. Passeth all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son Jesus Christ our Lord and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. <laughs>